Okay, everyone, we are ready to begin with the uh, Midwest Regional Champions, the Miami Hurricane. Uh, Coach Jim Larinaga, and he brought everybody. Uh, his starting five, Isaiah Wong, Jordan Miller, North Chad O'Meara, Nigel Pack, and Wuga Poplar. Coach, you're going to the Final Four. Tell us all about it in your opening statement. Well, first of all, um, I was very, very impressed in our preparation uh, to play uh, the University of Texas. But when the game began, I was, like, blown away by how fast they were. Normally, we're the faster team when we take the court. Not the biggest, but we're normally the fastest. And I thought Texas showed that they're every bit as fast and maybe even a little faster than us athletically. <clears throat> I don't know if these guys agree with that or not. But I think what occurs is the excitement of the game. I think we got in a little bit of a hurry. Uh, we made some, some uh, miscues on fast breaks that we normally finish, and we got to um, a situation where we, we couldn't really stop them. And so we trailed by eight at the half. They pushed the lead up to 13, and we called a timeout, and I just said to them, look, we just need to calm down and play better. There's no big secret in this. We're very good, but we've got to play very good. And our defense dramatically improved, our rebounding improved, and then once we get stops, we really can score the ball. And so we went on a run offensively, defensively, and that completely turned the game around. And when it got to be 75-75, we've been in so many close games this year, I felt very, very comfortable and confident that these guys will pull us through. Uh, th these guys are sensational players, each and every one of them. Uh, the game Jordan Miller had is ridiculous. Oh, seven for seven from there. How many points did he end up with? 30. 27. That's pretty good to score 27 points on seven shots. And, and any threes? No, not even a three. So, but Isaiah was great. We call a play for him towards the end of the game, and, and he just scores. Uh, we called a play for, for Wooga Poplar at the end of the first half because we, we were in desperate need of a bucket. And uh, he, he made a jump shot. He's absolutely sensational at that. that. And then Nigel was, was so good, like last weekend, this weekend, making shots, making plays, defending uh, Tyrese Hunter, who was very, very hard to guard. Uh, and then Norshad, I, my coaches were saying don't take him out because he only has one foul. Towards the, I don't know if you know, towards the end of the – First half, I took him out because he has a tendency to foul. He's a very Damn. aggressive – what? Damn. <laughs> he, he's a, a very aggressive player, and we love that aggressiveness, but I don't want him sitting on the bench in the second half. So I took him out in the first half to, to give him time. He only had one foul. Put him out there in the second half, and sure enough, he picks up two, three, and four. But he never fouled out, and he, he ends up – uh, only nine rebounds, but we had five guys in double figures, right? And that's really the balance we've shown all year long. And uh, I love these guys; they're all terrific. Their personalities are just sensational. So um, I probably talked too long. So questions? Okay, thank you, Coach. We'll go to questions in a second. We have a whole room full of folks. A reminder: please do not record on cell phone or any kind of camera, okay? That's prohibited. Well, I'm really? still cameras are okay. I mean, to shoot, but questions now. The first one on uh, our left. Coach David Smale, Field Level Media. I know nobody's perfect. Jordan came pretty darn close to it. What makes him so special and able to do that? Uh, I've said it all season long. He's the most underrated player in the country because he's good at everything. Uh, in the summertime, he had a 7-to-1 assist to turnover ratio in practices. 7-to-1. That's, that's ridiculous. That's better than any point guard I know. He can rebound. He defends all different size guys. Today he was switching ball screens at the end and keeping the guy in front of him. Yeah, the, uh, last week he guarded Indiana center. Trace uh, Jackson Davis did a fantastic job on him. He can shoot the three. He's great at driving, straight line drive, dribble drives. He makes all of his free throws. Uh, he is a great, great player. Simple. 
Okay, you're on the right. Hey, Coach. Uh, Luke Chain with Life Football Sports. First off, congrats on the win. Um, you know, last season in the lead eight, your team was facing a double-digit deficit in the second half, dealing with foul trouble. This year, again, was kind of similar. Why was this team able to overcome that? Yeah, I think last year we got in very serious foul trouble. Jordan got in foul trouble. Sam Wardenberg got in foul trouble. I think they both ended up fouling out. And we missed a couple of key opportunities uh, in, in the second half that might have kept us in it longer and maybe given us a chance to do what we did today. Um, so I told the guys at, at halftime, hey, this is very much like the Kansas game. We're behind. They came out and took control of the game, and, and that's what we need to do. And even though it took us a little longer to do it, if you watch the last 10 minutes of the game, our defense, our rebounding, our scoring – is just su at such a high level. Okay, you're on the left. Uh, Gary Furman, Canesport.com. Jim, basketball at the highest levels is such an individual sport. Uh, your team's going to the Final Four by being a team and, like, exemplifying that as much as any team you'll ever see. Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, how that's developed over the course of the year and how important that was today when you were in quite a jam. Well, Chemistry is hugely important. You, you want your players to, to, to really bond on the court, off the court. And I'll tell you, last summer when our two transfers, uh, Nigel Pack and Norshad O'Meara, came into the gym, Nigel just bonded with Zay like right away. Zay loved having him. They, they played great together. Uh, they both can really score the ball. And they just enjoyed it. Norshad is – his personality is just amazing. I mean, you, you can't help but fall in love with the guy. He smiles all the time. Is that better? Okay. And, and um, you know, we, we had a, a team dinner one night, and everybody had to say where they were from and everything. And so when it came, when it came uh, uh, Norshad's turn, they said, well, how, how did you end up here? And he said, I, I come from Nicaragua, and I got, I got to Mexico, and then I walked across the river. And everybody looked, oh, my God, this guy came into the country by – and then he just started laughing. And then everybody said, yeah, I'm just joking. <laughs> so that's his personality. And, and then you, you look at a guy like – I said, you know, Isaiah Wong is the ACC Player of the Year for a reason. And Wilga Poplar, his trajectory is so high right now, I can tell you. His defense on Rice – was, I'd say, at the highest level I've seen in college basketball. Because Rice can really score. He's got a fantastic shot fake, and normally everybody jumps for it. Wooga let, wouldn't let him catch it. He fought over every screen. He blocked him out. He got some rebounds. You know, it, between, you know, Nigel, Nigel, Wooga, and Zay, we got a tremendous backcourt. And then you look at our 4-5 position with, with Jordan, who's exceptional, and we, we got the, the best rebounder in the country in, in Norshad. So have I complimented you guys enough? Okay, good. Hey, Jim, just as a quick follow-up to that, yeah. when you're in a jam like you were today, yeah. how important is that chemistry that these guys have built? Yeah. You know, when, when you're at a timeout, you need their attention. And the first, the first thing that happens is I meet with my coaches to talk with them about, hey, what adjustments do we need to make? We're falling behind. So we have a circle that there's uh, these stools that the players sit on, and there's one stool for me. So there's five stools for the players, the guys are in the game, and one stool for me. So uh, when I was finished meeting with my coaches, I turned, and there were the five guys that were in the game and Norshad sitting in my chair telling him what to do. Can you tell him what I told you? What? Can you tell him what I told you? Can, what? Can you tell him what he told you? What, no, oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the score. So, Wilga wants me to tell you. I tell the players all the time during games, whether you're ahead or behind, don't play the score. Play the game. Uh, but we had come so far back, we were only down four, and I wanted the players to know, hey, now the game is really on the line. I said, look at the score. And I think it was 72-68. And I turned back to the team, and Wooga said, we don't play the score, we play the game. Is that the one, Wook? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's up next? 
Okay, here on the right. Chris DeMond, Miami Hurricane. Coach, 17 years to the day, you led George Mason to the Final Four, and now you've done it with the Hurricanes. What did you feel back then? What do you feel right now? It's, it's the same exhilaration, just the jubilant attitude, the effort, because you just love when your players accomplish a goal they set out before the season. And I'm a great believer in the seven habits of highly effective people. The first habit is be proactive, plan ahead. So always talking to the guys about planning, visualizing, seeing yourself being successful. But habit two is, um, what's habit two? <laughs> no, habit two is begin with the end in mind. And what we said the first day of practice, we got to start visualizing right now what we want to accomplish and then be working toward that every single day. And that's what these guys have done. Four minutes to go in this session here on the left. Uh, Blair Kirkhoff with the Kansas City Star. And this is for Jordan and Isaiah. You guys are down eight at halftime, but shooting 64%. Did you guys know that? And as the second half unfolded, your shooting percentage actually went up and the deficit increased as well. What is it about this team that allowed you to not get frustrated at that point? Jordan? First thing I'll say is our perseverance. Um, you know, no, none of us wanted to go home. Um, another big factor I would say is we know we're, we're pretty good offensively, um, but what's going to decide a game for us it comes down to how many stops we can get. Um, and we, even though we shot that good of a percentage, they were scoring too. Uh, and, and we knew we couldn't just keep scoring back and forth because they had the lead, you know, so we had to dig deep, uh, find a way to get stops. <clears throat> I'll just say I think the ACC for preparing us for these types of games. Just um, coming in, every game we played in the ACC, it's always a close game. It's always a shot to win. And I feel like coming into March, we, we've been in those types of situations. And we we um, played good. And we we, we wasn't um, afraid or scared in any situation. And we, we just stuck together and played together throughout the throughout the game. And I'll just say thank you, appreciate for the ACC for the competition. I like that saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, second row on the aisle. What's going on? Congratulations, Coach, and the rest of the team. Donovan Campbell from WSVN, Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Um, for you, Jordan, we spoke a couple times, and all you said that last year, the Elite Eight, you weren't satisfied, and you just did not want to have that feeling, and you wanted to make sure you will these guys, and you definitely did tonight. What, what, what was that like? Did you really want to put the team on your back, being the senior, and just ride out the way you did tonight? Here's what I'll say. Uh, that, that loss sat with me for a really, really long time. Um, I had to put it in the past because it was a new season. Um, but like I've said, having the opportunity to kind of right your wrongs almost and, 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 and get past something that, you know, stumped you previously is a great feeling. Um, you know, I wouldn't say I put the team on my back. Like, my teammates did a good job of getting me the ball, um, and, and everybody was in double figures. You know, I think this was a – what I'm most proud of is the will and, and the togetherness of this team. Uh, I don't think we've been down that much at a halftime since a, in, in a very long time. I can't remember. Um, but, you know, we just all bought into to staying together, you know, keeping that hope alive. And, and the way we just willed this one through, um, I think everybody played really well. And I think it really shows, like, the poise of this, of this squad. Let's go to Zoom for our next question. James Hill, please unmute yourself, speak slowly, identify your affiliation, and ask your question. James Hill with ABC7 in Sarasota. Just talk about the U, and this is a major day in the U men's basketball history. Um, you want to direct that to who again? Uh, to Coach and any of the guys who want to take it, please. Well, um very, very simply, uh, I tell the players all the time, it's about having a positive attitude, making a total commitment, and behaving in a first-class manner. So the university's attitude has been to provide all of its, its uh, athletic department sports the needed uh, resources. And our athletic director, Dan Radakovich, immediately came in, and he's, he's got the basketball program going to have a new uh, weight room and training room. 
Uh, we're building a new seven-story uh, football facility. We're building a new dormitory. The University of Miami is one of the top 50 schools in the country, and we want to be sure everybody in the country knows that. And our, we have a great pet band. We've got great cheerleaders. Last week, I, I went through the, uh, the lobby of the hotel, and our cheerleaders and dance team were all there studying. Two of them are going to be doctors, one going to be a lawyer. I, I sat and talked with them because it, to be at the University of Miami is a very, very special place. It, it's, it's like a resort. It's like you, you're not exactly on vacation because you're working hard, but the, the venues are, are just tremendous, and we're investing in ourselves and in our brand. And I, I love it. My wife loves it. And I'm going to go home and have a Smoothie King tomorrow. <laughs> Isaiah, we'll let you um, respond for the group on that, if you like. Um, I'll just say the Miami culture is just um, just a great place um, to be at. Like, Miami is a nice weather out here. Like you said, the students are great. And it's just a great culture to be a part of and a great organization to be a part of. And it's just a honor to be one of the – players on Miami and just going to Elite Four, it's just a, uh, I mean, Final Four, but, okay, but, um, <laughs> be quiet, Chad, just let me talk, Chad, let me talk, but, um, it's just a, just an honor to just being around these guys, it's just, um, they all, we all show appreciation, we all love each other, and we all just here sticking to each other, and it's just, um, it's just a great place to be at. Okay. All right, we're out of time. We'll take one last question here on the aisle. Uh, okay. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Oh. Jordan, you were six years old. Yes. When you... Go ahead. Sorry, oh. It's Michelle. Sorry. Okay. I've covered the team 26 years. I think I get to ask a question. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask uh, Nigel and Jordan if you could just say, at the moment that you knew you were going to win that game, what was your feeling to make the Final Four? I mean, that's something that every college basketball player wants. What would you, what were you feeling at that moment when you knew you're going to the Final Four? Um, it was a feeling that was unreal. I mean, to come back from from that deficit, especially you know, some people were starting to doubt. You know, could we come back? And you know, how hard we fought to get back in this game and to come back and actually win this game especially on a stage like this was, you know, something that was an amazing feeling that I can't even put into words. And I know how much, you know, these guys wanted to win this game, especially being here last year and, and you know, them losing in the Elite Eight and now be able to make it to the Final Four for the first time in program history is something special. And, um, I know for me and Norchad being transfers, you know, and this is our first time in the NCAA tournament, this is like something unreal to, you know, be with this great group of guys, um, our coaching staff being great and be able to make it to the Final Four in your first, in your first time, you know, making it to the NCAA tournament. It's like, Man, I don't know what to say, but I'm loving the experience so far, but we still got more work to do. Yeah, um, I don't know if I – there was a point in the game where I thought we were going to win. Honestly, I was just so determined to make sure, like, you know, anything can happen with however much time is left on the clock. Uh, Coach always preaches that. Um, but, you know, after the buzzer sounded, I mean, it, it felt surreal, you know, being able to go on stage, hold up the trophy – um, cut down nets again, you know, truly blessed. Uh, but like Nigel said, you know, we're, we're, we're going to celebrate tonight, uh, maybe a little bit tomorrow, but, you know, it, it, it's not over. Uh, we got a, a big a, a team that's rolling next, UConn. Um, so, you know, celebrate and then on to the next one.